professional games. And I what, want, what a way to start the conversation, and Brett. I, I wonder uh, from the perspective, and I, I say that coming from there are some games that you probably just got clobbered in, and <laughs> Arkansas just got housed in this past game. Uh, how much more motivated were you and the teams you played for to show out that next week coming off a, a devastating loss like the Hogs did on Saturday? Well, you're definitely motivated, especially after knowing a lot of the mental errors and mistakes that we made. You know, I don't think that we're that different from Georgia. We just shot ourselves in the foot, and you can't go into somebody else's house and do that kind of thing against the number two team in the country. And, you know, Georgia came out there and played almost a perfect game, and we made a lot of mistakes. And that's kind of – you go back and you watch the film, and you're, like, and you're really frustrated because you know that you're better. You know that you, those mistakes hadn't happened as often, you know, during the, uh, the first part of the season. So – what you're going through is you're trying to correct those. You're not really getting down. You just you have the motivation to go out there and prove that we can go out there this week and not have you know the, the false starts. That you know the, those type of things. We used to talk about combative penalties, like your holdings and your you know your pass interferences. Those those are combative penalties, but the pre-snap penalties those are unacceptable. And so you go out there and correct those, and and when you got a first and ten, it's so much easier than a first and twenty. And that's going to be that way throughout this process of the season and, and moving forward this offensive line and some other positions that they've got to make sure that, you know, they're, they're getting the combative penalties, not the pre-snap, because you can always correct the pre-snap penalties. Brett, when you look at Old Miss, I know they have Mississippi State, then LSU, and then you in the pecking order. you got to play them a, a decent amount in college. And I know there's been some great games from Arkansas and Old Miss this past decade. Where do they rank as a rival in football in the pecking order that is Arkansas's rivals? It's definitely up there because you always you've got to beat Ole Miss to be able to compete in the SEC West. You know, for us not to be at the bottom of the SEC West, we've got to beat Ole Miss. We've got to beat your Mississippi State, and and that's that's the way it's got to be. And if you don't win this game, then you know you're even further down on the SEC totem pole of uh, trying to get up there. And so we're both coming off losses. You know, Ole Miss. Well, obviously, we know what happened last season, um, and our, our defense has got to perform. You know, we gave up a lot of a lot of points last week. Our offense didn't score anything, obviously. So um, it's a big game for both both programs um, trying to move forward in the second year of two new head coaches um, in their second year. So this is a it's not necessarily a statement game, but it's a game where two teams are riding in high, got dominated last weekend, and they want to come out there and correct it this weekend. And again, it's going to be an early start, so you're going to have to get a fast start uh, on the opponent, and it's going to be you know it's going to be a battle. It's an SEC West game, and and you definitely want to beat Ole Miss. I remember that you know playing the, all those overtimes in Ole Miss, and you just want to beat them. And as a player, it's you know it is another SEC West opponent, but you, you just want to make sure that you can get another win, um, especially after coming off a loss. All right, you're the special teams expert, and we always have the questions for you. What happened last week on the two big plays that I don't know that they turned the game, but they stand out for Arkansas? The block punt that leads to the immediate score with a recovery in the end zone for Georgia. Break that down for us, and where the breakdown for the Hogs was. And Cam Little misses a 37 yard field goal, well within his range. What did you see on those that operations? Break down those two special teams plays from last week's Georgia game and why they went wrong. So what it looked like, you know, and this is obviously the TV camera, not the coaches found, but what you're looking at on the punt scheme, it looks like they're getting a jump on us. They're getting something with our cadence, something that we're doing with a head bob, a hand gesture, or something, because pre-snap, we looked up, and they were not going to be a potential to bring that guy down. And if you watch the film, Right as we're fixing the snap, he comes crashing down, and he runs right through the open gap, and we didn't have anybody blocking. You you know, we've kind of talked about this. We've been giving up this is our second block punt of the season, so there's something that these teams are doing, and and you've got to correct it because now moving forward, everybody knows that you've given up two punt blocks. They're going to try and scheme you. They're going to try and steal a possession, and this is another great game. You know, Lane Kiffin wants to steal a possession because the high-powered offense, you want to keep your offense on the field and get a lot of momentum, and and you've got to you've got to change it up. You've got to change the rhythm of these protections and, and, and cadences, and do something else. Maybe draw them offside. Maybe you're doing it in a you know a fourth and short, and you get a free first down. Uh, but there's a lot of things that other teams are watching now to see if we correct that guy coming down because it, it, it's a very easy protection. It's a very easy fix where that guy you know motions across, but that's got to be a lot of communication in a in a stadium that's loud. <laughs> It, it's hard to screen that, but, you know, we used to have a hold call when, when somebody would try and scheme us down like that, and basically we would hold it and reset, and then we would be able to pick up our blocks. So you, you've got to make sure that you're counting for all men. Uh, you usually count outside in, and you've got to make sure that you're picking up those blocks. And then on the third goal, I, I think we, we've made so many, and it kind of gets out there, and you think it's just going to be like an easy kick. 
and you just go out there and you just kind of push a little bit, and and that's what happens. And I think that he'll correct that um, going into this week, and it's just kind of keep your head down and you know focus through your mechanics and, and your aiming point, and just go out there and you know kick the ball. Don't think about last week. That's the biggest thing with everything. Don't think about last week. Last week you can't let Georgia beat you this week and make another mistake like that. Uh, because you give up a, a score like that, it's huge. You know, I think we talked about this after the Rice game. I think it's like 78 percent. The other opponent has a team, has a chance to win, especially when you're giving up a touchdown. And then the same thing on the, on the field goal is you're losing momentum. Even though it's only three points, it's a huge letdown whenever you just miss a kick where you think that you've kind of been fighting to get some points and some momentum built, and then you miss it, and it's a, it's a letdown. And then your defense has to go back out on the field, and you know and they're already tired. For a place kicker, I, I, I can't imagine a more pressure-filled moment than kicking a game-winning field goal really from, from any range, particularly one that's 20, 30-some-odd yards. It's well within your range. For a snapper and for a punter, is the most pressure on you when you're snapping into and kicking from your end zone? I, I would imagine that would be when you would be most uh, on edge or, or your nerves would be the most frayed, knowing any mistake here could be a disaster because that's when it – all came apart last week for Arkansas. What what was it like for you when you had to snap it into the end zone? What were your punters telling you when when you got put you know in the shadow of the goalpost? Well, it, it, definitely when the punter gets closer, you know, and you're you're on a shorter field back down there. Um, and we always used to say as we're going out there, you know, protection, 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 because you know that you're backed up. You know that they're going to put a rush on. Because what they're trying to do is, is the reason that the opponent's putting a rush on you is not only to put pressure on the punter and try to have a chance to block it, but to also keep that protection team downfield, not allow them to get into coverage and allows the punt return team to get a quicker return. They can get more yardage and automatically almost try and put themselves in the scoring position. So that it kind of works both ways there. And so you know as you're going out there on the field, hey, we're backed up, they're going to come after us. And then they're going to at least try and hold us up. And very rarely, like, you know, when you see like 11-yard snap when you're on the one, sometimes they'll just do a hold up in, in a six, six or seven-man box. But, you know, you know they're coming after you. Georgia, I'm sure, you know, had put that on film um, prior weeks. They didn't obviously put that motion on film because um, we didn't know what they were doing. But you know in those situations somebody's going to throw something at you. And now moving forward, like we were saying, like another team is going to make a scheme. They're going to make a new punt block that we have not seen and try and time up these snaps in those type of situations because we've given up two blocks. So now the pressure, you know, is on not necessarily to do go out there and do something that you're not used to, but we've got to go out there and protect. And the punter's got to know, of, hey, there's a bunch of people in that box, and they're, they look like they're going to rush. i got to be a little bit faster and get the ball out. And, and that's kind of on the whole operation. Um, it's just the communication between, the, you know, Coach Fountain and, and the players that they've got to go out there and just, make, you know, work. the most important thing is getting that ball off. You know, get a good punt, but you speed up just a little bit and try and get that ball off. That way we can get the ball down the field and put our defense on the field. Brett, want to shift the conversation to some NFL real quick. Two big-time games for a lot of fans listening in this state. You've got a rematch of the AFC Championship this past year in Kansas City when Josh Allen and Buffalo take on Patrick Mahomes and, and Kansas City. Bills have shut out two teams already this year. I don't think they're going to do it this Sunday night, but what do you like about this matchup ahead of us between the Kansas City and Buffalo? It, it's going to be a great matchup. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be everything that we expect and we hope for, and it might be another you know AFC Championship type game this week, and it might you know might turn into a rematch. Because like you said, the Bills it's so hard to shut out somebody in the NFL one time, let alone twice, and they've already done that this season. And, and then Kansas City now they're coming off. They're actually you know we talked about this last week. They controlled the football. They they didn't turn it over, and, and turnovers kill you. And then now their offense is kind of starting to pick up, and their defense is picking up. And so we're kind of getting into that second quarter of the football season where you know things are. You, your team is set. You kind of are who you are, and you know the plays are the plays, and everybody's going out there. And so it's going to be a big game. I, I think that everybody's excited for it. Both teams know what's at stake. Um, they they want to get home field advantage. That's what this game is. Is you're trying to get a win. You know, it's an AFC game. But you also are fighting for home field advantage because we know as we're moving in the playoffs, where if you go to Buffalo, that weather's going to be a lot different in the playoffs than if you go to Kansas City. And so there's a lot that rides in this game. It is one game, but you want to go out there and kind of set the tone and, and be dominant in that game and kind of show 
the rest of the league that you are for real. Dallas has set the tone in the NFC East to this point with a 3-1 and one record. The only lone loss to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've got a, another NFC East rival coming into town as they'll take on the New York Giants this Sunday. 325 game. Brett, are, are they pretty much the class of the NFC East right now based on what we've seen? I think the NFC East and the NFC. I mean, you've got to put them up there top ranks. But, you know, we all know how close that game was against Tampa to, to start the season. So they could very easily be, you know, undefeated at this point. So they're, they're running the football well. They're, they're throwing the ball and their defense is stepping up. And so uh, it's a, it's going to be a good game. You kind of throw everything out the, out the door for division opponents. Um, I, I remember one of the hardest games we ever played was to make Detroit go 0-16 in, in that last game. And it was a hard game. I mean, it was a hard fought game. And we had a Matt Flynn had to come in for six touchdowns. So, it, but these type of games, there's a lot of energy. Um, obviously, we know that you know the history of Jason Garrett. You know, New York's trying to. They got their first win. They're trying to kind of build some things going on there. So it, it's going to be a big ball, ball game. It's going to be a fight um, between the trenches. You know, it's going to be whoever sets that line of scrimmage. And Dallas has done that so far this year. And so if they can continue to do that, you know, Dallas looks. Pretty unstoppable if they can control the line of scrimmage and, and run the ball with that two-headed monster that they have right now. Fun time to be watching, uh, really, at any level, college or pros. You're kind of figuring out who uh, who's for real uh, right now. Hey, Brett Good, he's for real with Henderson Phillips. If you need real benefits for your employees, Brett, you're the one to call 651-2292. Whether it's health insurance, retirement plans, group benefits, whether it's life, dental, or vision, one call, 651-2292. That's right. We can kind of take care of it all. We're, we're looking at a lot of plans right now, a lot of renewals, um, even new business right now. People trying to attract and retain their, their current employees that they have. And it, it, it's, a, it's an uphill battle, you know, with the way the COVID is and the employee market is. You want to make sure that you're treating your employees right because, you know, they're working for the company and you want them to be happy. Yeah, so uh, if anyone's uh, looking to maybe up your game a little bit when it comes to the fringe benefits at work, Brett can help you do that. Or maybe you're looking to lower your cost but also get uh, maybe more bang for your buck. 651-2292 for Brett Good with Henderson Phillips. All right, good chat here on a Wednesday. Uh, we'll catch up in a week. Right, We're back you. and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to your website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B-L-E-A-V. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of these amazing offers for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts.